And stop to talk about wheels. Wheels? What about wheels? Lacing patterns and something a bit controversial that we're going to argue over. Interlacing. Inter interlacing is, is allowed in most states. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it? Interlacing is when so you're coming out of the hub and your head's in. It's coming out and it goes under the head's out spoke on its last crossing. Mm-hmm. Count us those crosses there. Well, this white spoke we're talking about right here, it crosses one blue spoke, two blue spoke, three blue spoke. It goes over, over, under, and that under is our interlace. That's right. So, this one, uh, always count at the hub, over, over, under kind of a braiding, kind of braiding them. So if we were to, to look at different hubs, well, we'll look at different patterns in, in a while, but this is done. I think, th did you teach people this? This wheel is what we use in our uh, video about yeah. how to lace a wheel. The most beautiful wheel in the world. It is. We have a great uh, wheel celebration video too. So we taught people to interlace and I was taught to interlace. Were you taught? I was taught to interlace as well. Yeah, but we, sometimes we do what our, our parents did and our parents, 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 parents. Why? Do you yeah. need to interlace? You need to, is there benefits? Is there benefits to not interlacing? Let's take a look at what it is. Let's get a visualization of maybe something that's not interlaced, Cal. Let's go to, oh, oh. right here. This wheel, one of the beautiful wheel. Let's get rid of this guy for now. So you can see here, it's a little harder to see because these are black spokes, but we're head in and it's going over, over, over to the rim and here you can see there's space a little gap between, between the last crossing not under so it is a over. very straight spoke all the way to the rim and some years ago people would have said that's gonna collapse truman you, you cannot possibly ride that apparently i mean it catches on fire every time i ride yeah. so we're going to continue with some of the traditional Things. Let's go way back, the way back machine. We're going to look at a four cross. Look at some of the different crossing patterns, and these are almost always interlaced. So mm -hmm. here, older wheel, can't be hub, classic Schwinn Paramount. This was a one, two, three, four cross interlaced. But you look at the same company, Schwinn Varsity, Schwinn the Collegiate. Stingrays. The Stingrays. The phantoms, probably. Were they interlaced? None of them were interlaced. Yes. So sometimes it was, oh, only the better wheels will be interlaced. Mm-hmm. Well. Let's talk about potential benefits of an interlace. Well, what does a wheel, what do we want out of our wheels anyway? Wheels gotta carry us on the bike. They have to roll, be round, mm -hmm. right? So they need to uh, support a, a radial load sitting on it. Is having that crossed over braided going to help? Would that, would that help? We, we try to simulate that here. Right there, that braid. What do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> Not gonna help there. No. Lat lateral stability of the rim is, is, is another thing that your wheel, you want right. out of your wheel. Uh, we're cornering, we're cornering. <laughs> yep. is it, does it change your overall bracing angle? Which, your bracing angle is what gives you your lateral stability. It's creating that triangle. Triangles mm -hmm, are strong. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm, is it? Is I'm going to say no. No. And, okay, people may, oh, what's wrong with you people? Obviously, it's bracing in this big, big circle. Well, you look at small flange hubs and large flange hubs. No, there's no difference in bracing mm -hmm. angle. So the flange, effective flange diameters, are not really making you a so-called stronger, stiffer wheel. Yeah, sometimes, if, I mean, the flange diameter in an extreme case sure. can make a better bracing angle. We have such a case you here. Have such okay, a case. I gotta brace myself here. <laughs> yeah! Bunk. So, what do we have? This is a classic, this is the motor uh, hub. You're gonna look at, this is a one cross, mm -hmm. just simply going up, crossing once, a one cross. This was built at a two cross. The spoke here, 
would be bending right at the nipple. You could not build this in a... Yeah, it kinks in. in. Right, right. But notice also this one is not interlaced. Yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, we're kind of talking about bracing angle. The bracing angle on this is not that much different than no. a smaller flange. No, it's, it's that, that's not a strength you're picking up. You're not picking up more with the interlacing. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're gonna so, yeah. drop well, this one down. So this one, ocean. one cross, goes feeding into the rim, and it fed in pretty nice. Yeah. So here, we have a small diameter rim with a fairly large diameter flange, and this is four crosses. Four cross. And if we take a close look at the nipple to spoke interface, you can see spoke comes up, 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 nice and straight, and then as it feeds into the nipple, it makes a corner and goes up. Nipples want to go in straight, but the spoke's coming in this funny angle and bending right at the nipple. Yeah. A and good these, design? Sometimes you can account for that with like the the rim drilling. If they drilled it. But this rim drilling didn't account for that. So it's got the... So this hub wheel, I should probably rebuild this and make it a two cross. Yeah. And that would, that would create a nice straight spoke down right to this where this mm -hmm. spoke is beating in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're saying the different stresses of when you're riding, there's a torsional load, the crossing isn't gonna really do anything, the interlacing isn't gonna do anything rather, uh, the braking loads, that's not gonna matter, the radial, the lateral, so um, those are some things that, that aren't needed. Mm -hmm. So then we've talked about things and forces on a wheel that interlacing is not going to help. So in theoretically, what are some things we could benefit through interlacing a wheel? Some people would say, oh, it, 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 touching them it shares the load. They're supporting each other. They're great. They're pushing against each other. There is some pushing. Does it make any difference in tension? No. No. So the, the theory here is you have spokes that are crossing, but they're not super straight when they cross. They bend a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they essentially become a little bit of springs. So when one detensions, the other one straightens. Mm -hmm. And it takes up any reduction in tension in that other spoke. It shares some of its. And then back and forth, so goes the relationship. And we can see this riding a really low tension wheel. Yes. The tensions have been at the bottom and squeak, you squeak, you squeak, a little creak in your wheel. It's the interlacing rubbing. So how to fix this? Clearly, you can oil each interlace. Would that fix it? It just makes it quiet. It does. It doesn't it does. fix the movement. It just That's makes right. it quiet. Because what the rider is really caring about is not actually the structure of the wheel and how strong it is. Yeah. It's how annoying it is to it's, ride. It's the mechanical equal of turning up your ear pods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so those rub. What, yeah. what does rubbing typically create when there's no bearing mm -hmm. interface? Back and forth, two pieces of steel, throw in some dirt. We could, so it could create wear, yep. which that wear could create a um, stress riser. Stress riser. Mm -hmm. So and a broken spoke. You do have that creaking, tighten everything. Yep. That's the that's the key that's there. The solve there. Okay. Okay. Well, benefits. Benefits. So what like let's so they share a load. That's I think one of the main benefits, but it can create a negative. There are some things. Mm -hmm. On some certain wheels, rear wheel especially, that right side, when we interlace it tends to flatten that side. On the drive side, it's a little bit flatter when we do interlace. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this white one might stick out a bit. And so what would what would the downside of that be? Well, it's... Half of this wheel is interlaced, half is not. The side with the spokies stick out more mm -hmm. and they're rubbing up against that derailleur when it's too far. When it's too far in. When That's beam, right. When you have the, you know, in this case, your low limit was a little bit too, too loose. loose. It's too close. Or okay. maybe you bent your hanger a little bit. It's a little bit more protection of having that chain and derailleur jam into the spokes mm -hmm. and ruin your day. Yes. Okay. So that's probably a reason enough, at least on that side. Yep. Right? But under, we're trying to say here, understand 
you're not gaining these other wonderful aspects. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, trying to clear away a little bit of the smoke here. Yeah, and you know, on, say like say we're building it for a mountain bike, like this hub would go to a mountain bike, mm -hmm. and now we've got these rear drive trains cassettes with Bang. five plates like this. Yeah. So it gets further up in the angle, so it's already further in. So there's definitely a potential benefit from the interlace to keep it further away from your derailleur. Right. Then issue is like right. that. Definitely right. a potential benefit. Right. So when it when we, we can look at this one just spinning, you'll be able to see. Let's move that away a little. Again and again, and it's rubbing only on half of it. Mm -hmm. Half flat, half not so flat. Now, what about? other wheels so i've been riding mm -hmm. non we've got a few sets of these non-interlaced wheels now what have i noticed what's the number one thing that i have noticed with non-interlaced wheels noise hmm. they are louder when a rock or a stick or you know dirt cloth or something comes up there's more resonation. There's mm. more spoke noise in this wheel than in an interlaced wheel. It Inter doesn't have it. The other spoke is not deadening the sound. It's allowed to resonate. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing I've noticed. Not any, you know, stiffer or anything like that. Just it is, it's a little bit louder when you're riding it on a mountain bike trail and rocks are being kicked around and mm -hmm. dirt and sticks and all that. So. That's, that to me was kind of fun. Yes, yes, a reason to interlace or not, up to you. Factory wheels. There are a ton of wheel manufacturers mm -hmm. out there and they build wheels and there are companies that that's all they do. There's companies like Shimano here that that's part of what they do. This is a straight pole wheel, XTR, top of the range in its time period. Um, pretty, pretty fancy, special wheel. This wheel does not interlace. So that just means like, okay, fancy wheel, not interlace, interlacing, you shouldn't do it, right? Uh, yes, that's up to them. We do what they do. Yes. Do it. Well, maybe. Or not. Here's another company. They are factory interlaced. So we're over, over, under on a straight pole. Let's, let's get back a step up the straight pole world. We have a J bend, your traditional J bend. Mm -hmm. That's in your hub with these holes in it. Okay, that makes sense. And then a straight pole is like a nail, a big, long, skinny nail. That nail sits in a special hub, and then we, we get our straight pole. Most are not interlaced. It's, you can see there's a good size gap there. If you do interlace it, it does start to bend a little bit. It's really difficult to interlace a straight pole wheel. Yes, and it is. Most of them do not, and there's many benefits to a straight pole hub. Yes. There's you know, some drawbacks potentially. And we, we do owe our, our audience a how to lace a straight pole, and it's gonna be pretty simple. This one has to go this way. Can't go the other way, has to go that way. It's gonna go in that hole in the rim. Yeah. It ain't gonna go in that one. It's <laughs> Straight pole wheels, it, it, it's pretty easy. Once you put the first spoke in, everything else has to go. All the thinking going. was done by the engineers for you. <laughs> yeah, there's so, no choice. Right, so we're seeing both, our companies do both, not interlacing and interlacing mm -hmm. on, on the straight pole. But yeah. generally I'd say not. If you're building it, don't yeah. bother. With the straight pole. A fun one, here's a, this is interlaced. This makes it a lot of fun and it's right here. Yeah, another reason for interlacing. Yep. So if you don't interlace and you want to say, shove something fun in your spokes, like a reflective card. It's just, this is gonna come flying out. No, no fun, no, no bueno no. there. No. So. But with these, it gives you two, the two holding together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, the pinching. What do you think? What have we learned out there? What, what did first, what are your wheels? Yeah, go check what your wheels are. Yeah. Are they interlaced? Are they not? It's fun to know approximately how many wheels out there that either you built or were built pre, pre like your bike came stock with or you mm -hmm. bought aftermarket. The market share of interlaced versus non-interlaced. That's a fun, that would be a fun number to know. And what are some other aspects of this? What have we missed? What else is there that makes the actual difference? Yeah. What have you perceived? Yeah. We want to hear from you. Leave us some comments in the 
in the comment section below. We'll be reading and responding and, uh, and but interlacing, the topic is fun. It's a bit of um, something where, you know, pick a side or just kind of go with the flow. Yeah, get your popcorn and enjoy the comments. Lace them up. See you later.